Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have a really interesting equation, by the way, uh, this is, um, I guess this could be considered a homemade functional equation because I haven't seen this problem anywhere, not on the internet, not in any book or any competition. I didn't take it from a friend of mine that those are basically the sources of my problems. A lot of people are asking where do you get these problems from lots of different places, but books and internet are the two main things. And of course, I sit down and just make up problems too, that some problems come from cyber math. <laughs> Anyways, so this is the functional equation that we have, and we're gonna be solving for f of x. We're gonna try to find an expression for f of x. To be able to do that, we're gonna kind of look at the structure. So what kind of structure do we have? We have an additive structure, we have a multiplicative structure and we also have a multiplicative structure. So f of x and f of y are kind of mixed together in an additive and multiplicative fashion. So, as is, I, I don't really see any way out. So here's what I'm going to do. I noticed that if I have a sum in the denominator, this is my thinking, and I have a product in the numerator, it should be the other way around. So here's what I'm trying to say. If you have something like a over b plus c plus d, you know what this tells you? This kind of tells you to flip this fraction. Why? Because if you flip it, you're going to get b plus c plus d over a. This also gives you a little idea about how I come up with some of these um, systems and equations. Anyways, now you have something that is separable. I don't know if you call this separable, but maybe splittable. <laughs> we can split this into three fractions, right? Look at that. Wow, that's amazing, right? I mean, it's better than uh, the original form. Because if you think about it, like if I had something like, and by the way, I'm just coming up with another problem. If you want to use this problem, that's fine. Feel free to do that. But um, suppose you had a system like this, right? I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just guessing. And then D probably would be ABC. And then let's call that W. Now, so what would you do? You would flip everything. And then hopefully you're going to get something that is helpful. I don't know if this is going to work, but... Uh, this should hopefully gives you some idea about my thinking. So my thought process is flip both sides. Make sense? And of course, coming up with a problem like this makes solution method easier because you kind of start with the answer, right? And you work backwards, you don't see the end result. We're going to get to the end result. That's what's fun about these uh, problems. Coming up with these problems is kind of fun. Anyways, I talk too much, so I should... Stop talking and get to work. 1 over f of x, y is going to be the reciprocal. And then this whole thing is going to be divided by a product, which is nice. Now I can go ahead and split it up. 1 over f of x, y equals. Now, how do you split it up? Well, first of all, think about it. I have f of x divided by this, right? Now, f of x is going to cancel out. That's going to give me 1 over f of y. Nice. That's what's really nice about this. And then you're going to do this with f of y. And that's going to give you f of y is going to cancel out. You're going to get 1 over f of x. Hopefully, you can do the algebra here. Easy. And finally, if you do this, you're going to get 1 because f of x times f of y divided by itself is going to give you 1. You see, this is much better. And guess what? This is how I came up with the problem. I start with the end result again. It's easy uh, to come up with, but solution is not that easy if you don't see the trick. Anyways, so what do you notice? I noticed that some function um, is being flipped and then being added to uh, the same function at a different point, evaluated at y, and then there's some plus one is the reciprocal of that type of function. So this should tell you, if you dealt with functional equations before, this should tell you to substitute something for one over f of x. Let's go ahead and replace it with G of x, how about that? F and G are good um, friends, so <laughs> they go together well. So this means this is G of y, and this is going to be G of x, y. By definition, right? If I define G of x as 1 over F of x, then replace x with y, replace x with x, y, so on and so forth. So far, so good, right? But there's one thing that we got to do. What is that? Let's write it down first, and then we'll see. G of x, y equals, by the way, that's a product. Let's put it together so it looks like a product. G of, okay, I can write a G. G of y, but I want to write the x first. Allow me to do that. Plus G of y plus 1. Okay, 
Now, if you didn't have the one, wouldn't that be awesome? Like, forget about this. Let's just sneak it out, right? We can't do that. But if you, if you didn't have the one, then it would be easier because we could use Koshi's ideas, right? But we have a one. But don't worry, that can be fixed. If you have a one, just add another one. Why? Because you'll see. Let's go ahead and add one to both sides. And then write our function this way. g of x plus 1 plus g of y plus 1. Did I tell you substitution is awesome? Yes. Now we're going to use it one more time. How about calling this h of x? h is another friend, good friend. So from here we get h of x, y, h of y, everything falls into place. So because if h of x is g of x plus 1, then h of x, y would be g of x, y plus 1. Basically, you're replacing x with x, y. Okay, you have that kind of freedom with functions if they're well defined on a certain domain. So this is going to be h of x plus h of y. And guess what? This is Cauchy's functional equation. Isn't that awesome? Yay! <laughs> Great. So we kind of did, let me summarize what we did. We took this expression, we realized it's not splittable as is, so we flipped it and then we split it into pieces and then we use substitution and we turned it into something more friendly but wasn't friendly enough and then we added one to both sides to get uh, to use substitution one more time and we end up with Cauchy's functional equation. Of course we use substitution twice so what we have to do is solve for this equation and then back substitute twice. Get the process? Okay let's get to work. So Here's what I have, and this is Cauchy's functional equation. Of course, we're assuming that h is continuous. Is f everywhere continuous? That's a good question to ask. But h is going to be continuous, so we're going to be finding the solutions very easily. Now think about it. What type of function turns a product into a sum? And if you said logs, you're totally right about that. But which base? We don't know doesn't matter. This is not an initial value problem. If it wasn't, if it was given, then we would definitely know. But anyways, h of x must be k times ln x. That k is there to adjust the base because it doesn't have to be ln x. It could be 2 ln x or log x with base 3 halves. I don't know. Something. So now uh, this satisfies and you can definitely check that. So let's go ahead and go back. h of x is equal to what? g of x plus 1. Hmm, that's interesting. So from here we find g of x. By subtracting 1 from both sides, we get k ln x minus 1. But that's g of x. I don't want g of x. I want f of x. What is f of x? f of x is 1 over f of x is g of x. Okay, so 1 over f of x is g of x. Therefore, f of x is 1 over g of x. f of x from here is going to be 1 over k ln x minus 1. So this is the type of function that is going to satisfy the original equation that I gave you. If you don't believe that, you can go ahead and substitute. I'm not going to do it. I am lazy. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. See you next time. Bye-bye.